So for those of you who are familiar with the compressor built into Logic, well, it's going to look very unfamiliar now. <laughs> so some great improvements to the compressor for Logic. On the left-hand side, we have an input gain, and we also have an input meter, which is very, very cool. On the right-hand side, we have our output meters, and it's just way more high resolution. In the center, we have our gain reduction meter, and we also have a graph, which gives us a really nice representation of um, where our threshold is and how uh, our audio is being affected by the compressor. So the compressor types are all the same types that I've talked about before in my other videos that you might want to check out on Pyramine's YouTube channel. Uh, except they added an extra one called Vintage VCA. And if you look, like all of these models now have a very specific styling. And check that out. So Platinum Digital, this is what we've all seen before. This is uh, Logic's compressor. Uh, it's a very, very, very flexible. Um, but there's a lot of things that have changed on it. Here's our knee, uh, attack and release, threshold ratio, and, mess and makeup gain is right up here. Um, if you want to do peak or RMS, which you have available to you in the uh, Platinum Compressor, you actually have to go to the sidechain section, which is a little strange. Um, so if you wanted to go RMS versus peak, as far as its response curve is concerned, you have to do that there. So that's a little weird. But now when we go to v uh, Studio VCA, you'll see that the knee has disappeared. That's because the response curve in this has been programmed so that you wouldn't use the knee. Uh, it would change the characteristic of this compressor. So as you see, they've pretty blatantly ripped off the Focusrite Red series with its brushed red aluminum and these uh, fancy dials. And uh, it's really odd when you work with this after having worked with Focusrite gear for a long time. It gives you this, like, the visual feedback's very trippy. Um, in terms of how it makes you feel about the compressor. It's very interesting. Um, let's see what this meter looks like in action. So we have this beautiful analog looking display. If we go to graph, you can see this is the transient and then how much gain reduction we get. On the left-hand side, we have more of a uh, sort of standard response curve. Very, very nice. So under Studio FET, this is where we get the Yuri 1176 look, the black face, um, which is the newer, slicker, sort of tighter um, FET compressor, field effect transistor uh, compressor. We also have Vintage FET, which actually looks vintage now, which is pretty cool. And I've talked about all these before. Uh, classic VCA, which is like the DBX160, now looks more like the DBX160. And then a vintage VCA, this is more like an SSL channel G bus compressor. Um, so it's very, very fast and nice for using as a sort of glue compressor. Um, sounds pretty good. Uh, one other thing that I really like about the compressor is the stuff that used to be in the disclosure triangle down at the bottom is now just sitting here right on the surface of the plugin. So you have access to it very quickly and easily. Vintage Opto, of course, looks like an LA-2A, which is beautiful. You can set it to, you know, 4.6 to 1 or 5 to 1 to kind of emulate what the ratio would have been on the actual hardware piece and, uh, and go to town. Ah, oh, that beautiful distortion. <laughs> now, granted, I have a bunch of other stuff on this channel strip, which is, you know, not really giving us a very fair representation of the sound. Now I'll go to Vintage FET, Vintage VCA, Classic VCA, Studio FET, Studio VCA, Platinum Digital. All very, very different, um, but still following the same guidelines that I had before uh, in the other video where I was talking about the response curves of these different compressors. The visual feedback system, though, is fantastic. I think you'll have a lot of fun playing around with this definitely get into it. I think you'll really like it. Now let's talk a little bit about automation. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool and until I came here for the first time I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are 
outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and then, you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really helped me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.